Welcome to another DK Custom Products video. I'm Dwayne and this is Kevin. And today we're gonna to talk to you guys about a dyno. You know, the ins and outs of how a dyno reading works, how dyno testing works, and why we test our parts on a dyno and how that translates to the street. So before we get into this, I want to do a disclaimer. This is not a comprehensive no, by no means. video on how a dyno works. At DK Custom Products, we street develop, street test, and then we use a dyno to confirm what we think we've experienced yeah. on the street. So we use a dyno mostly for before and after, and we do the dyno. We don't do a dyno today do some uh, right. modifications and then a week later or a month later do another dyno and go oh look at this is what it produced and now we did this part yeah. and this is what it produced there's just too many variables because there's too many variables we literally change the parts on the dyno or we might take the bike off the dyno and ch to change the parts and get it back on the dyno within an hour yeah, yeah. usually a half hour most of the times it's 10 or 15 minutes for comparison purposes. But we've had questions come up when people have looked at uh, some of our different dyno runs that we've published on YouTube and we wanted to address that. And so the very first thing that comes up is people go, oh, this doesn't replicate what it's like going down the road because you have wind. Yeah, so, so they're right. But at the same time, they're not 100% correct because there the, are ways to replicate yeah, it. The, the dyno that we use, that we've been using for the last three years, mm -hmm. has three fans on it. And you can see right here where we put these fans. <laughs> yeah, you can see how fast on, it moves. And, and the, one, the, two fans, the one fan that's going straight across the engine from the front, I think it measured, we'll look at it here, 128 miles per hour yeah so you can replicate headwinds now you can't replicate you know june bugs hitting you in the face or grandma pulling out in front of you yeah. but you can replicate headwinds and you can maintain a certain temperature and air intake volume and things of that nature like you can certainly get as close to an apples to apples comparison as reasonably possible right so there are fans you see them in the video here there are fans that replicate that so for those who were concerned, you know, that it's just a bike yes. sitting stationary. So what are the other main components of a dyno? Well, you have the two screens, one of them showing the air fuel right. ratio, the other one uh, and the RPM and the speed, and the other showing the chart, which shows the torque and the horsepower along the line. Right. We'll put that on the screen. Pretty much a data readout. So how does it do it? It's really simple. You just drive the bike up, the front wheel goes in a chalk, it gets strapped down mm -hmm. and secured. The back tire sits on a drum that spins and the drum that spins has a certain amount of rolling resistance that right. can be set to it. And, uh, and then the fans are on to keep the temperature at the ideal temperature which is anywhere between 190 and 230 on a twin cam. And uh, then what are some of the other variables uh, that come in when you're looking at a dyno run and you're wanting to go, is this really accurate? How come this bike is showing 105 yeah. and the same bike. My brochure said I have 110 foot pounds of torque, but I'm only getting 108. What's up with that? Yeah. Well, that's because there's so many variables, different dyno machines, different dyno techs, you know, just so many different variables of why you could get a different reading. That's why we don't put these charts out to brag about a torque number or a peak horsepower it's number. Always comparison. <laughs> because it's a crapshoot. I mean, you can yeah. go to two different dynos, yeah. you're gonna get two different results. And so sometimes, you know, your dyno tech can set you up for failure or they can set you up and give you something to brag about. Right. You know, so there's no real, the, and the reason we do a dyno test is to get before and after results. So comparison, right. Comparisons. Does this air cleaner really make this bike run better? Right. And we keep everything the same we do. So what are some of the other things that will affect it? Oh, and 
I want to mention one thing. When you look on the Harley website and you look at the torque numbers, mm -hmm. and why are we talking about torque? We have a whole video on horsepower versus torque that we'll put up in the corner here. Watch that video. Yeah. We only care about torque. But why uh, on the Harley website, they post torque numbers for their different engines, but they post the amount of torque measured at the crank, right? not at the rear tire. Right. All the stuff we do is at the rear tire because that's what's felt going down that's the road. That's the relevant real world measurement. So you have the loss uh, in the transmission, you have the loss in the belt, you have the loss in the uh, rolling resistance of the tire. And of right. course, you can have the same engine on a deluxe right? And as you have on a trike. The trike is going to show lower numbers absolutely, because you have all the ro rolling resistance of that rear differential and those two big tires right. versus one tire. Right. And even still, you know, some, some touring models, you know, if you look at the lineup, they all have a 114. The ones with the heavier mag wheels are, are going to have three to five percent less torque readings because it's just it a heavier tire. More power is is eaten up in getting that uh, rear heavy wheel rolling. That's right. That's right. So what are related to that? Here's one thing that's very important. Your rear tire, most rear tires should be on two wheel bikes should be at 36 psi. But if you do it at 42, you're going to get a little higher number. Mm -hmm. If you do it at 30, you're going to get a lower number. So you want to have it at the number that you ride at to yeah. get to see what kind of torque you're going to get while you're riding. That's right. Here's another huge difference that um, is a variable on dyno readings, and that is the weather. The cooler the air is, the more oxygen there is That's in right. the air the better numbers and, you're And we've get. seen that ourselves firsthand. Uh, last winter, we did some dyno testing out here and got great numbers. <laughs> we did the testing at our open house event two weeks ago, middle of May. Numbers weren't as impressive. For, yeah. the, for the same general bikes yeah. because the, the, uh, um, the temperature that the air is uh, makes a difference in how much oxygen is in the air. Right. But then you have humidity and you just have uh um there's it's just so many even you have a winter blend of fuel and a summer blend of fuel that's going to play a role there's so fun. many yeah. different variables yeah. that in my opinion it's not worth putting an exact number on something you know i put more stock into a before and after than i do a peak horsepower yeah. or torque number and and for those of you who are aware dyno jet dynos have what's called a weather station they're supposed to compensate through different right. algorithms. They're supposed to compensate for the humidity and for the air temperature. And they do to a degree, but they cannot do it right. 100%. So those of you who know that there's a weather station, yes, we know that there's a weather station, but it does not do, uh, uh, it does yeah. not compensate 100%. That's right for the different weather. Those of you who didn't know there's a weather station, now you know, because what some dyno operators do is if they want to, something not to show good, mm -hmm. if they don't like a part, they want something not to show good, they'll change the settings in the dyno weather station so that it will produce yeah. a lower number. So it's not apples to apples. Right. Conversely, they can make something look better than it really is by changing something and by changing that. That's right. That's right. And it's not dyno. just not just about the ambient temperature. It's also the temperature of the bike because as we've seen in tests we've done, and we'll throw a video up there. You know, on an M8, once it reaches 270 degrees, you lose 10% of your power overall. Yeah. Like it starts to back off timing in an effort to cool it down. And if you don't know that and your bike's up there above 270 and you put it on a dyno, you're going to get a less than optimal readout. And you're not going to know, well, why is that? I don't, I don't understand why. It's because the temperature is above a certain threshold and that's dictating performance. So as Dwayne has said, dynos for our purposes are for comparison. Yeah before and after adding a part, before and after doing a tune, all done at the same time, 
no changing of any parameters on the dyno, making sure you keep the temperature of the engine the same, mm -hmm. and doing the tests one right after another so that it's at the same ambient temperature, same humidity, and then that way you get a true That's right. uh, before and after of a part. Now, all these dyno charts that you see people just going, oh, I went and had my bike dynoed, yeah. and I got 110 foot-pounds of torque. Another guy goes, well, I have the same bike as you, and I got 119 foot-pounds yeah. of torque. Another guy goes, oh, man, and I don't, mine's only 98 <laughs> foot-pounds of torque. Well, these dyno runs were probably done, one of them maybe inside yeah. in a dyno room where maybe they have the temperature way down to 60 degrees. Yeah, yeah. It's going to dyno better than it is going to be like in the mobile dyno we use that's out in the ambient air temperature of 85 degrees. Or maybe it's going to be different than the inside on another dyno. Or maybe that customer rode his bike 100 miles or so to the dyno shop, put it on there, and the tech was unbeknownst to him that at 270, it backs off timing and he didn't get a good readout. And I can assure you there, there's some good dyno tuners out there. There are some, there's some, just like any, any, anything mechanical, there are some bad ones out there too. Some that, you know, have no business working these machines. And there's guys, good, good dyno tuners who just are having a bad day. We have a whole video on what to yeah. know before you put your bike on a dyno. We'll put that video up in the corner here. Another thing to know is people talk about what gear they do their dyno run in. That's right, that's right. You yeah. always want to be as close to the one-to-one, -one, so fifth or sixth fifth gear. Fifth or sixth, yeah, because you can't get no wide open in second or third gear. You have to yeah. be in a high gear, fifth or sixth. On the newer bikes, a lot of time, um, on the newer bikes, they have a speed limiter. The yeah. speed limiter on the newer bikes is set, I think, at 109 miles an hour. You can, Now, you want your dyno run to go all the way to at least 5,250 RPM, even on a stock bike or a stage one bike. You want to go all the way to that. Well, the thing about it is, is in six gear on a 2022 Street Glide, you can't get to 5,200 no. RPM in six gear because the limiter is going to shut everything off at 109 right. miles an hour, which is before 5,200 RPM. So a lot of times you'll see that the uh, pulls are done in fourth gear or fifth gear, and that's just so that you can get all the way up to 5,200 RPMs before the speed limiter. Mm -hmm. Uh, kicks in at 109. When you do it in a lower gear, you are going to sh show a little bit lower number, or you're talking one or two percent lower number. So another big thing when looking at um, a dyno chart mm -hmm. is not just to look at the peak number, to, but to look at the curve. So for instance, we just we just did a video earlier today about installing spark plug wires. Mm -hmm. And the peak number with the new spark plug wires was only two foot pounds high. Right, right. But in the 1800 to 2400 RPM range, which is where a lot of right. riding is done, it was 11 foot pounds high. Right, higher. right, right. So that, while you're looking at the number, and it's only a half a percent higher on torque, but that is a notable amount of improved throttle response on the low end. Uh, it's, the bike's gonna be a lot peppier. It's gonna take off the line. It's gonna run much more efficiently. So, you know, a lot of people put too much stock into those peak numbers. Right. When you need to be looking at that power band yeah, and because, how it translates to real world applications on the street. I mean, 98% uh, at the most, even the craziest guy out there, he's not but two or 3% of the time at wide open throttle. Yeah. He's most of the time in some sort of a cruising. So you want to look at that. And that's the other thing. We don't do a lot of dynos on it, but we have done some where we never even give it full throttle. We want to see how much torque is being produced at 20% throttle, 30% yeah. throttle, 25% throttle, because that's where most of the riding is done. So anyway, I hope that we've answered some questions mm -hmm. that people have had about dynos. The thing that really uh, spurred us doing this video the most was people going, well, you know, you guys talk so much about heat 
and how heat affects the power of the bike. And when you have it on a dyno, you don't have the wind going by. We do have the wind yeah. going by. There's three fans, <laughs> one sort of at an angle on the left side, one straight on on the yeah. right side, and one going this way on the right side. So there's plenty of air on yeah, the dyno. Yeah, absolutely. And we even used our little anemometer to show how fast that air is moving, which is at a pretty good clip. Yeah, so we tried to clarify, you know, all the bias and variance between different dyno techs and different machines. But if you guys have anything that you think we've missed, leave us a comment. Or, you know, if you have any differing opinions, you know, we always welcome any and all comments. But if you have any questions at all about anything you've seen in this video, shoot us an email to support at dkcustomproducts.com. Y'all ride safe out there.